Okay, I'll open up the October 18th DRB meeting to order. Agenda changes? I don't know of any. Um, no, I, d I don't have any for you. All right, if everybody can review the minutes of October 4th. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Stay in Absent. All right. Next on the agenda is Rocky Martin. Conditional use review for an accessory apartment. So if you can just explain what you're... Uh, we're seeking <coughs> conditional use approval for uh, a, an accessory apartment in a separate structure from our house. It's not going to be attached to the house. It's in a whole separate structure. Uh, it's on Fern Road, which is off of Piet Road, up past Iroquois Manufacturing. Fern Road is a private road. So um, it's going to be a single story uh, wood frame construction. Uh, my wife and I are going to occupy this uh, very small. Hi, Greg. Uh, uh, just a little bit less than 900 square feet. Um, it's, uh, let's see, I think that's, that's about it. The site map shows where our existing house is, mm -hmm. where the proposed, um, our accessory apartment structure is planned. Uh, the existing driveway and uh, there'll be a, a small access off of the existing driveway right into the uh, into the site for the apartment. Rocky, the only question I have is about power. Uh, it's not discussed in the draft decision. Um, it's underground to our existing house and the proposal is to continue it underground to the uh, to the accessory apartment. Well the existing house is way farther down the driveway. Is yes. it a pad down by the road? Uh, no, the pad is actually um, by yeah. our existing house. So you're going <coughs> to go back down? Yes. Okay. What's the distance, Rocky, between the two houses? Uh, approximately 800 feet. No, yeah, just can't create can't create additional access drives. So, uh, which wouldn't be a, a problem in Rocky's case. He's at the end of Fern Road. Board members, have any other questions? No. I don't think anybody's here from the public for this application. This is a, uh, with all due respect, this is a slam dunk. There's, it's, it's pretty it, straightforward. Yeah, it meets all the requirements. And uh, yeah. I, I just think we need to tweak the findings and maybe the uh, order with respect to power because there's no mention of power in this. Well, order five says it has to be underground. Did I miss that? It says all utility systems included but not limited electric gas. I did gas. miss that. Okay. All right. Did you want me to add a finding just to note Rocky's testimony that it would, or do you, does it not no, matter I, I as long as it's in the order? Uh, if it's in the order, that's sufficient. I'm okay. sorry I missed that. Well, sorry I harassed you, Rocky. I'll make a motion to approve the draft as written. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you. How's the family? All right, up next is Where UVM Medical there? Center. Yeah. No, they're in college. Yeah. You could just state now your name and <laughs> let us know for the viewing audience what you're looking to do. Sure. I'm David Kelty with the UVM Medical Center. Hi. Gail Henderson King with White and Burke. Hello. And uh, we have a, a quick 
less than five minute presentation just to go over what we're proposing, if that's all right. okay. Sure. Okay. Gail, would you like a laser pointer? I brought you have one. one, all right. <laughs> Should have guessed. I actually came prepared. Um, so uh, tonight our proposal uh, we feel is beneficial to both the town and to the University of Vermont Medical Center, and it's simple. Hopefully we can go through this quick. Uh, tonight, I'll go over quickly, go over a brief overview of the project, uh, talk about the proposed subdivision modification with the elimination of the proposed alfalfa lane right of way and increase a lot to acreage, talk about some advantages, and summarize it up. So, just a, a quick, I, probably everybody's familiar with this, but I'll just quickly go over it. So, here's uh, Route 116, Shelburne Falls Road, CVU Road. The Bissonette subdivision that was approved in 2011, it was a four-lot subdivision. Lot one is where the um, Heinsberg family pr practice exists today, Alfalfa Lane. Lot two, this is uh, uh, Haystack Road, and it's proposed to connect all the way through the Farm All Drive, which is across from Commerce Street at this intersection here. Uh, in the immediate neighborhood of, of projects that are proposed, uh, the Wind Energy Associates development, uh, the proposed Heinsberg Center development, uh, phase two, and then obviously Commerce Park. So uh, the proposed business subdivision modification, uh, we'd like to uh, eliminate alfalfa lane right of way, increase the acreage of lot number two with the acreage from the alfalfa lane right of way, to be able to create uh, contiguous lots between lot number one and lot number two. And uh, the reason for this is the medical center wishes to be able to purchase lot number two for future development. But right now, lots one and two are bisected between, with uh, alfalfa lane, so it makes it difficult to be able to uh, use it for future expansion. They need to have contiguous lots uh, for that future development. Uh, and so the subdivision why, modification why? that we're looking for. Why, why do they need to have? We're not uh, planning any development, but we want to just preserve as a land bank potential future development. We have no project that we're considering now. So um, uh, I was never in favor of alfalfa lane in the first place, yeah. but uh, just conceptually, how, how, how could you expand uh, in a logical way that wouldn't require a different access? No, we would use our current access. Right. From lot one, I mean, if you get to the site plan, you might <laughs> say. Uh, so here, here's lot one, lot two, alfalfa lane, bisecting the two. There's an enlargement of it. What we're proposing is to eliminate alfalfa lane. That that acreage would then go to lot number two. So these two lots would be contiguous. The alfalfa lane was uh, only approved as a right in, right out only off of Shelburne Falls Road. The main access to lot two. Was, is uh, to come off of uh, the uh, Stasak Road and then with a proposed, uh, an, well, it's now an existing right, uh, of right of way. So that would be the access to lot two. So that access will still remain. That will be the, that's the current access right now for the Heinsberg family practice. And then this So way, conceivably, like, there could be another building or a new building on. Or an addition onto the existing building. Right. Okay. All right. Right, but in order to expand, having that road in between just doesn't work. But as one, yeah, as one entity. Mm -hmm. right. <coughs> so is that actually is the road on a different lot? Does that it, continue on to lot four? It is. It is. Of lot four it's okay. part of lot four. Right. It's hard to sort of see, but um, but lot four has two skinny access strips that that right. connect to Shelburne Falls Road. One okay. is Haystack Road. And one is is this future alfalfa lane. They're both owned strips of land that that bisect these front blocks. Yeah, we've pretty much been submission to allow alfalfa lane back in the day, um, uh, with with the uh, you know information being uh, commercial wouldn't work on that corner without that access. Um, but obviously, uh, uh, given this proposal. Uh, we're not talking about a separate commercial business needing direct access. So, right. It, so it could be a separate commercial business someday, but it would, as Gail explained, uh, be utilizing the the right of way behind well, Lot yep. One, right. which is where yep. you wanted it to be in the first exactly. place. Right. Yep. Right. 
So by eliminating alfalfa lane, it removes a curb cut onto a town road, which uh, is beneficial. It also removes, uh, eliminates <coughs> this uh, intersection so close to the major uh, traffic light here at 116 CBU Road and Shelburne Falls Road. Um, we got you out of order on your slide scale. Do you want me That's to do okay. advance or retreat? No, let's, go ahead. let's, just, let's just advance. Let's okay. just advance. So the, so the advantages, as I said, was the minimizing of the curb cuts on the town's road, eliminates the curb cut close to the Route 116 CVU road intersection. It also allows the UVM Medical Center uh, to uh, for the future expansion. I know what I was going to say. Um, a previous slide. Uh, there is an uh, irrevocable offer of dedication that has been. Uh, handed over to the town um, and so on Alex's advice we did approach the select board to see if they're willing to reject that uh, irrevocable offer of dedication which would need to happen after the subdivision modification is approved and they have said they're willing to do that uh, they, they agree that eliminating it has a lot of benefits for the town so um, so once if the DRB hopefully approves this, uh, then uh, we will end up going back to the select board to get uh, that. Uh, to be rejected. To reject. <laughs> they'll, essentially, reject. they'll essentially extinguish it in some way. The lawyers will figure out how to do that. Yeah. So, so what actually was dedicated? The irrevocable. So it was a, it's what's called an irrevo irrevocable offer or irrevocable offer of dedication. It's a legal document that uh, a landowner can sign and give to, in our case, the town saying, um, I am giving you uh, this easement or this land or whatever, and I can't take it back. I, I, this is so what land? Just that little strip the, of the lot road. four. The road. Right. Yeah, that road. strip of lot four. Okay. Yep. And and so when the Bissonette subdivision, the four lot <coughs> subdivision was approved, um, Wayne Bissonette, Joe's dad, who was uh, shepherding it at the time. Um, provided the town with ir irrevocable offers both for alfalfa lane and for haystack uh, road all the way to the boundary of his property it was very uh, it was a very generous um, offer uh, for pretty much the entire road network north south so we we will uh, we have those on you know on record and uh, we haven't the way your irrevocable offers work is you record the offer so that it can't be taken back but you don't record the actual easement or deed conveying that ownership until you're prepared to accept it. And so the select board hasn't taken any of these easements or properties yet. Uh, oh, because the road hasn't been changed. Right, because nothing's there yet it's to there. be taken. And this uh, will increase our grant list by like a mill. Not a million dollars, oh, but a mill. right, oh, more <laughs> land to tax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lot. So it's true. Lot two will get larger and lot four will get a little smaller where that access strip um, is so I had, I had a question it's not directly pertinent to this application but uh, one concern uh, we, we had few concerns I think last time but I think there was an issue about parking with the proposed facility the existing facility I think some of us thought it might be too big but you persuaded it, it it is not and when I go by it it seems like it's pretty full so does that seem to be working or do you have a lot of it is we we've, we've had some people that have said it's a little tight but it for the size of the building we built the parking is adequate sufficient so um, I, I think some of us were thinking maybe to make it smaller but smaller probably wouldn't have worked well for you guys not in a primary health care setting okay. do you have a that's parking a, space that's a good point greg i had forgotten that we did give you a little grief about that you did and, but uh, we had provided you evidence right yeah you had a place in <coughs> manchester where you right said which is really overflowed tight. yeah, yeah. Um, generally speaking i know i don't know what your zoning ordinance is but most towns have uh, 200, uh, one lot, one parking space per 200 square feet of building, and I'm not sure what your regulations yeah, are. Yeah, ours was just a guideline. It yep. was meant Our, to we, encourage We typically discussion. see in a primary care site, 150. Yeah. So it's really because, you know, you got a person in the office, you got another person coming, you always have to provide an empty parking space. And us patients are supposed to arrive early and wait. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. I can't speak to that, but or they forget to leave. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's we'll keep going. So, finish this. so just in summary, uh, the University of Vermont Medical Center would like to 
uh, have uh, lot two for future expansion, uh, but in order to do that, they need lots one and two contiguous. Uh, so the subdivision modification that we're proposing tonight is to eliminate uh, alfalfa lane and the acreage that's taken up by alfalfa lane would go to lot number two. So we increase the acreage of lot number two. Again, the advantages is eliminating a curb cut on a, a really busy, uh, congested part of Shelburne Falls Road. It's also eliminating a curb cut very close to a major intersection. And uh, this would all be contingent on the University of Vermont actually purchasing the lot. At this point, the medical center still needs to do their due diligence on the lot and uh, go forward with it all. So if for some reason, they don't uh, purchase the lot, uh, this will just go, go away. This would um, follow, follow, file a mylar for it. So. Right. If the mylar is not filed within six months of the approval, then the approval's void and this never happened. Mm. Unfortunately, we can't condition a sale or a purchase. <laughs> and while Ted's ruminating, um, you, you're aware that the, there will still be two separate lots there, yes. such that yeah. if the medical center wanted to expand right. the facility in such a way as to sort of cross over that lot line. We would come back with a specific we, plan for yeah, review and merge approval. the lots or rearrange right. the lot We're line not, to meet the setbacks, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's a long that. ways away. Yeah. What does that mean for lot number four? Do you think we have lot number four? Is that the plan? What does the, <coughs> the removal of this road access mean for lot number four? Um, not, not a lot. Uh, the principal access to lot number four is coming from Haystack Road, that principal north-south um, road, as well as uh, uh, the future access to 116 opposite Riggs Road and then from the south. So there's multiple access points to the balance of the of the Haystack Crossing property and the street sort of grid that uh, Ben Avery's group proposed still works without this additional sort of leftover, um, you know, up to Shelburne Falls Road. Okay. And we're, we're very much in support of this. We think it's a great use for it. It's obviously a good future expansion for the community. You know, our, our only input was we wanted to be sure that as we move forward with our plans, it doesn't come back to bite us with this board as some sort of a fatal flaw. We were, weren't intending to use it for a first or even second phase of the project as our planning is unfolded and so we don't, we don't see it as a, as a big issue. There'll be multiple uh, points of egress for the neighborhood by the time we get to that side of the project. So. so so, at this point, it's just a change in property lines. There's no property ownership isn't transferring. OK. All right, do the board members have any other questions? All right, I'll open it up to the public. Nothing? And we should just recognize that uh, the other landowner is here, or representing the other land, Joe Bissnett, <coughs> from Haystack Crossing, who owns lot four, or lot two. four, and two. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, well, we have a draft decision. With it. I would move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank All right, you thank you for your time. Thank you. You know, we should be so easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> next time. <I'll> <laughs> 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 we'll make it hard next time. Okay, thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, I'm okay. probably too late to ask now. Is there a new plat or something going to be filed? Yes. Yeah, it's on yep. the, the road gone, the, uh, the, the right in, right out gone, uh, all the site plan changes. Uh, yeah, the, the, the plat will show that the, the lots yeah. coming together and that road going Hopefully. away. Okay. Yeah. And this decision okay. we'll codifies that in writing. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll move to other business.
Haystack Crossing extension request. I move to approve the six month extension of their sketch plan approval. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Second one, too. Yes. Will and Colleen McKinnon extension request for two lot subdivision. So they didn't provide a letter. This is yeah. another one of those 10 acre subdivisions yeah. that has that extended time horizon and they just need a little more time. So what's, what's the cutoff date for them? Uh, people have to have their final approval from your board by March of 2018. So most of these folks yeah, are looking for extensions still. into 2017 and they're going to have their survey work and such done in, in 2017. So what, 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 what's the suggestion? Six months? Yeah. Six months sounds sensible yeah. for mm -hmm. that timeline. I would make that motion. I'll second it. Do we need to set a date or do you just say six months from? It's automatic six, from Six months date. from their previous okay. expiration, yeah. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Tori and Daniel Tucker, extension request for sex clean approval. They're a little different. Two lot subdivision. They're not one of these 10 acre lots. They're just a, a garden variety subdivision in the RR1 district, and they're, they're getting close, but six months seems not to be long enough a time for people to get their survey work together. So they're looking for an extension to for another six months. Yeah, exactly. Which one was this one? This is on the corner of uh, by Pond CBU. Road and CBU Road and oh. Mechanicsville Road. Right there in the corner. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that kind of small tight it's, lot. It's, yeah. it, exactly, yeah. with yeah. a lot yeah, of existing structures on it. Yes. Yeah, with potential yeah. graves. With yeah. the gravestones, yeah. yes. <laughs> Funny what you remember about these. <laughs> it's almost Halloween. <laughs> we'll make a motion to approve a six month extension. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Alex is up. Training. Right. Maybe you can pass that along to Ted. Ted, this is your new zoning that was passed out last oh. meeting. Oh, thank you. Most of it's not new, though. Most I of know, it's not like new, like right. One, it's, one or two pages. It, exactly. Right. So, uh, Alex, I'm going to head out. Do you want me to? Two-second update with the board on the water. Dennis, would you like to have a two-second update from Mr. Avery? I would all like to hear. Sure. I, I'd be interested. I, I, <laughs> Where's I that rig? Seconds. I've been yeah, expecting okay. to see a well rig. It, it'll be drilled by the end of the month. So we we have worked uh, with town staff on a proposed well development agreement um, where we'll drill we will drill a well, a test well at our cost. Um, in a location is determined by hydrologists hired by the town. Um, we've worked extensively with the state to get it sort of right in the right pocket of where it can go. Um, but the general concept is, fingers crossed, we get a, a reasonable amount of water supply. Um, we would get access to a portion, a percentage of that water so that we could move forward on a phase one. And uh, assuming it's a, it's a good well with a good production rate, then the, it goes into the town system and the rest would be distributed for allocation to other projects. Um, so it's a, it's a process we've worked on with Trevor um, and to my knowledge with, with some consultation with the town attorney and with Eric. Um, there are several other well sites on other parcels. Um, I think the concept is it's a, uh, if it works, it's a model that uh, could work for at least one of the other major subdivisions that's working its way through. So it's an affordable way for the town to uh, explore new wells and hopefully expand the water system and seems to be a win-win for everybody. Is there a concern about the contamination that uh, affected the existing wells is going to infiltrate to these new proposed? Not has been expressed to me by Eric or by the state. So, so geologically there may be some geologically kind of isolation? they must be indifferent and there's one that's been identified on the Lyman property as well which they feel very good about. So and that's a thing on the other side. So um, to my knowledge, they haven't had any concerns there. And again, we didn't, uh, these are sites that were were really identified by Eric Bailey and, uh, and dictated by the town. Um, and, and we went with that. They had invested the time with hydrologists and uh, we felt like that was, there have been some good wells. There's been a good well drilled um, with that data, so. What, where are you drilling? Where, where is it? it is, 
so you've got the brook coming down on the south side of the property. So, in fact, I can tell you, it is exactly 200 feet west of the sewer line. It's 150 feet north of the center line of the brook. Mm -hmm. And when we eventually, hopefully, come through with a phase one, you'll see it's, it's affected the road. We dropped a few units. We had to lose a few houses in order to create the protection area. But um, it, that's the general location of it. It's, it's, if anybody walks out there, it's staked now, I believe. So that's not, is it in the vicinity of the, the park? The, the, the rec field? No, it's, it's actually it's east, of the, uh, east of the rec field. It's east of the rec field. So, but it was, this was the highest value. The hydrologist identified three sites, uh, two on lot four and one on the Lyman parcel, and this was the highest value of the three, in her opinion. Now, will the water all run through our new system? Mm -hmm. Correct. The, It'll all run through that new the, system? I mean, obviously, it needs to have enough volume to Great. warrant uh, development of the well and and the the cons the concept is is that we'll pay for the drill and the town will pay for the development and implement you know bringing it into the town system um, but yeah that's that's part of the reason for the location as well um, <clears throat> relatively quick and easy to get it up to the to the main line and then over to the um, to the water treatment facility so all in all it seems to be uh, a reasonable plan and with any luck, we will. Um, that's why I haven't seen any movement from us in the last six months. We've really been focused on this. It's a problem that we've got to figure out. So, okay. Uh, with any luck, we'll hit some water. But All right. We'll let Alex know. Thanks. Thanks for the update. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, everybody. You too. You too. So uh, I'll make this brief. It, it was a very minor change um, to the zoning regulations. Uh, the select board adopted these changes in September. They became effective October 3rd. And the, the whole point of the changes relates to an act that the legislature passed, not in 2016, but uh, in 2015. It was Act 56. And it gave, for the first time, municipalities the ability to adopt screening requirements for energy facilities, particularly um, solar, uh, renewable energy facilities, that if adopted by the municipality, the State Public Service Board, which is the body that reviews those solar uh, energy facilities, that the Public Service Board would have to pay attention to them, would have to implement those screening requirements, uh, unless they, there's, there's wording in the statute about unless it, it makes that project impossible, um, you know, defeats the purpose of the whole project. So in any case, uh, Len Duffy, one of our local residents, brought it to the Planning Commission's attention. He's been pretty uh, concerned about a lot of the solar development that's been happening. Uh, so he brought the Planning, Com Planning Commission's attention last fall, about a year ago, um, and the commission agreed to work on it, and, um, and it took a little while to get the select board to, um, take it up, but uh, when they did, they adopted it. And so uh, what it does is modifies the purpose statement for section 5.6 in the zoning. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the place to put it because, this is the section on design standards for commercial industrial uses, because Act 56 also did something a little weird, which was to say any screening requirements that the town adopts for solar have to also apply to regular commercial industrial use. In other words, the legislature wanted a common set of standards, didn't want us to treat uh, solar uh, development differently than uh, other types of development. During the Planning Commission conversations, it became very clear that actually they should be treated differently. The screening you know, needs are very different, but we're sort of hamstrung by state statute. So we're, we made revisions to section 5.6, which deals with commercial industrial use design standards. Uh, this, this preface section um, tells you what it applies to, um, and that includes projects that require site plan approval, including as well as uh, ground, mountain, ground mounted solar energy installations, but only those with a capacity of more than 15 kilowatts, which <coughs> basically, um, eliminates all the backyard single tracker kind of solar arrays that are that are ground mounted. Uh, remember, this is ground mounted, so it doesn't apply to um, roof mounted solar. 
And so in addition to those, um, it, it excludes, um, it makes sure to exclude home occupations from these design standards, uh, accessory apartments, uh, farms, uh, commercial forestry operations and the like. So after the preface, the meat of it is down here. And uh, what was done is we've clarified that there, are, and Annie helped us with this actually before she left, we clarified in the regs that there's a difference between landscaping, which is the requirements for which are laid out in section 4.3.8, which is your site plan um, landscaping section. There's a difference between that and screening. And um, this section of the regs 5.6 that we're focused on is really just dealing with screening. You know, how do you um, uh, soften the visual impact of a project generally from the road or the property lines? And so this is not about interior landscaping or shading parking lots or things like that. Um, so the language here, uh, I helped write it, so it's word, a little wordy. Um, it, it tries to explain you know, what the point of this is and it talks about the fact that um, all projects require screening, um, but that it, it <coughs> doesn't need to be required for minor use or minor site plan revisions for existing uses. So there was concern brought by the public during the planning commission pro process that if a business came in for you know, a minor tweak to their parking lot or some new lighting, maybe they needed to make a stormwater plan adjustment because they were having some erosion issues. Those are all, those kinds of minor revisions to an existing plan would not trigger the need for new screening. Uh, so know that. Mm -hmm. um, but for those projects that are new, that do in fact include new structures or new parking areas that do uh, need screening, uh, this tells us what's supposed to be screened. So at minimum, it is those parking areas, unbroken building facades, dumpsters, and ground-mounted solar arrays. And then it goes on to explain uh, what kind of screening we're looking for. And the key to take away from all of this red text is that the, the screening is in, intended to blend the project with the surroundings, not hide the project. So we're not looking to put up a eight foot tall wall of cedar so that it cannot be seen. Uh, we're looking to put in appropriate uh, vegetation and or fencing uh, so that it blends with, this, with the surrounding environment. And so there's language in here that says context matters. Look at your surroundings. If you're proposing a um, farm equipment repair business out in on Baldwin Road in the in the agricultural zoning districts where you have sort of rural uh, agricultural and residential land screening is going to be more stringent because that's not an industrial area and people aren't used to seeing you know an equipment uh, repair shop with you know uh, vehicles outside large parking areas storage whereas if um, Heinsberg Sand and Gravel was interested in co-locating another business next to it uh, and they came in front of you for site plan review and we talked about screening, there would need to be some, but that's a heavy industrial district. The amount of screening doesn't need to be as much. So with that said, there's some, sp some specifics. Um, talks about vegetation being preferred, uh, that, but that fencing may be allowed, although it can't, uh, can't be reflective. And if it's gonna be metal, it's gotta have appropriate coverings like you've required in some other projects. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, both the topography and existing or proposed uh, screening can be used to meet the intent of the regulation. So if somebody has a natural rolling terrain and they wanna um, they want to place the project in a, uh, in a spot where the topography helps hide it from roads and surrounding properties, that's fine. And again, we don't need to require a row of cedars in that sense if, it, if it's going to blend with the surroundings. Um, it does have to be uh, effective and maintained year-round, and the commission did include that it has to fulfill the screening objective within five years of planting. So we can't have folks planting... Um, sugar maple trees that are this tall and saying, well, eventually they're going to provide something when that's going to be 40 years down the line. Uh, I think the only other uh, interesting facet to this uh, had to do with, uh, what was it? So why, why all the strikeouts? Well, because the original language um, didn't really work for what we were trying to accomplish. So we deleted a bunch of language and added new, hopefully clearer language 
So this will come into play in some conditional use in some site plan yes. applications? Correct. Anything that requires site plan review um, <coughs> needs to meet these standards in Section 5.6. So we have site plan, we don't have site plan review of solar uh, arrays though. Right. But, but so the state has to look at these. Right. Things. So I should clarify. Got it. All this language is only going to affect your process for traditional mm -hmm. commercial, industrial, multifamily, residential projects that have to meet these standards. Yeah, yeah. Anything that's not solar. Anything that's not solar. So but the reason we made these changes was to, to deal with the solar. So this is the Green Street rule, basically. Right. <laughs> We're not calling it that, but that project was brought up a number of I'll times. I'll bet it was, because uh, I've heard a lot of people saying, how did you let that happen? And we said, well, we didn't let that happen, yeah. because we're not, uh, it's not part of our... Well, and so program. that's that's instructive to think about those trackers that are right next, next door on Charlotte Road, next to the Green Street Project. Those trackers are very much front and center in your face, very, no screening, mm -hmm. um, but the town installed similar solar trackers just down the road off of Lagoon Road near the wastewater plant. There's no screening much in front further, of... Much further off the road. Exactly. Right. So there's no screening in front of those either. Right. And it's a it's both a con, a contextual sure. uh, assessment right. and um, and an acknowledgement that distance matters. Well, oh, yeah, exactly. But I'll tell you that in my interpretation of this regulation, if the town were to do those solar trackers all over again, yeah. probably yeah, the PSB would have required some level of screening in front of them. Hmm. Maybe not as much as you might see for something right up right, there on the road, right. but something. And you're seeing, I'm seeing that in most of the solar projects that I drive by. If you notice the one on 2A in St. George near the storage facility, mm -hmm. um, you can see little cedars planted you know, uh, around the edges of that. I don't know if they're gonna do much in five years worth of growth, but you know, the intention is there. Um, so in any case, yes, we made the change to capture a type of project that your board doesn't even get to review. Right. But right. because of the statute, yeah. the changes we made are going to apply equally to non-solar projects that your board does review. Well, we look forward to developing experience in this area. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure we do. So, Alex, is the, the project across the road here, is that, uh, does that meet the uh, energy capacity ceiling? The 15, was it 15 yeah. kilowatts? Yeah. Oh, yes. That must yeah. be way yes. beyond. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think Each for... Each one of those tractors is I think seven? One or two Six. of them adds up to 15. I'm, okay. I think it might be two. Okay. So, that yeah, sense. that project okay. is, is well over. Okay. Is that 15. owned by Green Street? Yes. I believe so. I think they purchased those. I don't think they're leased. The town leases the ones uh, next to the wastewater lagoons. But on November 8th, you get to vote on whether you want to buy them. There's a bond issue in going in front of the voters for money to purchase those solar trackers that, that are on the town property. Hopefully you'll be seeing some educational information about that. That will be the reason we all go to the polls. That's right, because yeah. the, yeah. Other, yeah. No the other election in the polls is a little less uh, boring. Uh, so we have some news. Do we have any news? Oh, yes, we absolutely have news. Uh, and that would be this fellow sitting in the audience. Uh, hopefully you all saw the message. Mitch, our zoning administrator, was uh, selected for the development review coordinator position. Oh. So he is our new development review coordinator. So and, welcome Mitch, board. and our zoning administrator, until oh. we can find another zoning oh, administrator. Oh, you can do both so, for a while. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's a co collaborative process with Mitch and me servicing your board for the next month or however two months, however long it takes for us to find a, a ZA. At that point, Mitch will be all yours. So you live in South Burlington? I live in South Burlington. Only nine miles away. Easy. You could be here for our emergency meetings. <laughs> yeah. So so Mitch, just to remind you, Mitch came to us from South Hero, um, and was very happy to get a job closer to home. Uh, but Mitch has uh, a, a pretty stellar uh, resume for the position, having served as ZA in South Hero and Richmond but is also a licensed civil engineer and worked for a local civil engineering firm in between those jobs and also prior to coming to Vermont. So um, Mitch has a lot of expertise that will help your board and have You'll been be helped shocked, us. simply shocked at some of the stuff that goes on. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that in the, in the last year that Mitch has been here, his first year, um, 
all of that knowledge is tempered by what I what I like to think of as sort of a Heinsberg realism. He's not a Heinsberger, neither am I actually, but um, it, it's not overblown. So uh, it's it, so we, we have a good pragmatic person who also has some some chops. Oh, welcome. Yep. yep. Good. We'll both be coming to your meetings um, for, a for a little while. Anything for the next agenda, next meeting? Anything? Uh, your next meeting is on November 1st, and uh, the only item on the agenda, actually, no, there are two. One is that map of conversation. We're going to have that finally. And the other is Brett Grabowski for uh, the continuations of both his application to fill in the flood hazard area, which uh -huh. he got approval for, which then expired, and he's come back to get it again. Uh -huh. And also the preliminary plat review for his whole phase two project. Hmm. And I'm working. We did that three months ago. That was longer than that. But in any yeah, case, six months, we're, sure. we're working with him just like we're working with BlackRock and, um, and Renewable NRG for, to come in with a phase as opposed to the whole thing. So right. I, think, I think you're going to see something a little different on the first. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, Alex. Ben. The town's going to explore. Hey, Shanice, are we?